Howdy doodle do, how are you? I'm Kaimi Massey and welcome to Classy Massey. Today, I'm going to show you how I did this queen bee makeup look. I did this look a few years ago in March of 2019. It was the one that I was the most proud of, so I wanted to recreate it to see how I improved and to show you how I did it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below what you would like to see next. I started by making the bees the day before. I'm going to show you what I did last time versus what I did this time. Originally, I thought about using the same method, but I decided I have better materials, so I should do a better job. For the new bees, I'm going to be using my Thermomorph plastic. The way it works is you have really hot water and you place the little plastic pellets in it. The plastic will soften and turn clear. Then you can mold it to whatever you want while it cools. After I take the plastic out of the water, I dab it on a towel to get the extra water off. I started by using a plastic fork to get the pellets out, and I found that they stuck to the fork as well, because it was plastic. So I switched to using a metal carving tool. I flattened the plastic blob out and put it back in the water so it became soft again. I decided how big I want the bum of the bees to be, and I make little blobs similar in size. This is when I decided to make five bumblebees total. I took each blob and heated them one at a time and molded them into a cone. Then I curved the pointed part just a bit to be like a stinger. I happily referred to these parts as the bee butts. On the final bee butt, I didn't mold it fast enough so it was hard to work with, so I just popped it back in the hot water and tried again. After I made all of the bee butts, I melted another blob to make up the chest. I made a little ball and I smooshed it onto the butt. I hoped the warm plastics would stick to each other, but it didn't work, so I eventually super glued them on. Be careful not to drop the little pieces. I dropped like five. They kind of looked like teeny tiny bottles of Felix Felicius from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. The size that the thermomorph pellets already came in was the perfect seed shape for the little bumble head, so I super glued those right on. It was difficult working with such small pieces with my stubby fingers. I set them aside to fully harden. I was gifted this big assortment of beads for Christmas from my little brother, I want to say five years ago, question mark. I've used it for making hair clips and I've hot glued stuff on top of it. So it's got chunks here and there. When I got them, they were not organized and I remember it taking like three hours to do so. It has little bits and charms too. My old time turner and half of a glass butterfly that broke. But I used these little oval pearly ones. I figured they were the perfect size and shape. Last time I used a Sharpie to draw the stripes, but I wanted to test out some of my other black markers. In the end though, the Sharpie was the only one that stayed on without being all water blobby. I don't know what to call this. I only made two little beads, get it? because I knew I wouldn't be using them and I didn't want to waste the beads. I made three lines with the Sharpie as thin as I could get it, but it was hard to hold and I ended up getting black all over my finger. After the new bees had fully hardened, I get out my brand new folk art acrylic paints in daffodil yellow and pure black. My paintbrushes I've accumulated through the years. A few are probably stolen from my mom. I'm sorry, mom. I love you. Aside from that, I keep them in this old glasses case that was given to me... I don't even know when. <laughs> a lot of my stuff is lost and found. Like, when people found out I did makeup, people just started giving me old makeup that they didn't want anymore. It was great. I still have a ton of it. Because I don't use it fast enough. And then people give me more. It's... It's a great cycle to be a part of. I started with painting the yellow, which took about three coats total. 
I didn't want to set them down and ruin the drying paint, so I just held them till they were done. The black surprised me and went on with one coat. They look like little Christmas lights. When they were all done, I experimented. Which tool would give me the smallest lines? I settled on a mechanical pencil with its lead a little overextended. I just put a blob of paint on the end and used it to lay down thin lines of paint. They're not the straightest lines, but I figured that it was fine because real bumblebees have fluffy bums anyway, and this helps make it look more natural. Or as Stetson Studio says, Free weathering. Free weathering. Free weathering. Free weathering. Free weathering. For the wings on the old bumblebees, I used a piece of tracing paper, and to make it more bendy, I put water on it and rubbed it in. I was hoping that it would make the wings kind of wrinkled to add texture, but alas, that was not how it worked. I folded the paper in half and held up the bead to see how big I wanted the wings. I cut them out and super glued it on. Now, bee wings are a little gray with black veins, but they're also see-through. So I'm using this piece of clear plastic to make the new bee wings. I did the same thing where I folded it in half and cut out the shape I wanted. I made sure to cut on the fold so that the wings would stay connected. My husband had an idea where I hold the plastic above a candle and color it with the soot. So I got a candle and my husband got the fire extinguisher. I may have lit my desk on fire once, but it was an accident. I just fell asleep. It's fine. The plastic just kind of melted into little blobs. So I take my clear wings and super glue them onto the bees. I still want to make the wings gray. So I try using a clear varnish to thin out the paint, but it doesn't want to stick to the plastic. Then I tried a bit of Mod Podge and it stuck to the plastic, but it was too thick. So I used both and it stuck to the plastic and still like it beaded into thin vein like things and I was pretty happy. I gently brushed it onto the wings and made the outer edge darker so that they stood out. And that's the bees all pow. The old ones are what I came up with in the moment and it worked at the time, but you should always strive to improve. Your best then may not be your best now. I started with my hair already tied back and I hairsprayed my little flyaways back so that they would not be stuck in the wax and latex as much as it could have been. However, four days after washing all of this off, my husband still pulled out a bunch of wax and hair from the shower drain. So. I start by using my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in white to mark where I'm going to be placing the honeycomb. Then, using Ben Nine Nose and Scar Wax, I am taking a blob of it and smacking it onto the back of my hand to start warming it up. To keep the Scar Wax from sticking to my fingers while I try to use it, I'm going to be using this Vaseline. Don't be alarmed by its color! I was bored one day and I colored it with food coloring. Also, it used to be in this huge jar and it was mostly gone, so I transferred it into this old electrical tape container because storage space. The blue goop on top is an experiment where I used water activated face paint to color some liquid latex to see how it would work. I flatten the now warm scar wax into the shape I need to cover the areas I want. Then I slap it on. Still using Vaseline on my fingers, I smooth it out onto my skin. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to fetch it up later by poking a ton of holes in it. 
Now it's time to see me in my natural habitat and state, which is singing and being a weirdo. I'm a weirdo. Congratulations, you've discovered this. The only downside to having colored Vaseline is after a while your fingers turn kind of green. It doesn't color the wax or leave color on the face in my experience. I used food coloring, which is a water-based dye, and Vaseline is petroleum or oil-based. It's just, it's not water. Vaseline is generally water-resistant. So it didn't mix completely. So technically there's just really tiny beads of coloring in there and my sweaty palms just soak it up. To make the hexagon shapes in the wax, last time I used a brand new pencil. This time I started by using an Allen wrench, but I decided that it was too small, so I just wiped away the small holes and switched to using the butt of a colored pencil. It was kind of rounded on the bottom, so I thought it would make it look more natural. I coated the end of the pencil in Vaseline, and I still had to hold the wax in some places while I pulled out the pencil. Next, I put Ben Nye Clear Liquid Latex on this super not fancy glass plate. My latex is nearing the end of its lifespan, so it's hard to get out of the bottle and it's partially dry, so I didn't get it as smooth as normal, but I thought, hey, beeswax isn't perfectly smooth. It's fine. Free weathering. I apply it with a disposable makeup wedge lightly over the wax to hold it in place while I move. If the latex on the sponge gets too dry, just cut off the end with a pair of scissors and you have a brand new sponge. Use Vaseline on your eyebrow to prevent them from getting latexed off later. I got as close as I dared to my hairline, but I still left a buffer just to be safe. Then you have to wait for it to dry the rest of the way, so dance break! After it's fully dry, patter the crap out of it. Also, get it all over your black shirt so it looks like you were snorting. Flower! Don't do flower, kids! Next, take your foundation and concealer and make your face and wax one kind of normal color. I'm using a foundation lighter than my skin so that the yellow stands out later. I use my Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palette to contour my nose, neck, temples, and my exposed cheeks so my face doesn't look as round as it really is. Using my Ben Nye Zombie Wheel, I am using yellow to color my wax. I make sure to get inside each hole. I then set it with my Ben Nye Pressed Color Palette. I use Sun Yellow to blend it out as well. Taking a small brush with a small amount of dark brown shadow, I shade the inside of each hole. I also shade some smaller dots on my head to make it look like the honeycomb fades out. The 
Using the same sun yellow, I cover my whole eyelid. I put a small amount of orange in the crease to add some shading. I also added some of the same dark brown I used to shade the honeycomb. I went back to the honeycomb with the orange and dusted all of it to add more color. I place a bit of gold shadow on my eyes and use my wet and wild highlighter to highlight the tops of the honeycomb, my brow bone, the inner corners of my eyes, my nose, and my cupid's bow. I'm using a small angle brush with my black shadow sense to create a nice sharp wing to mimic a stinger. I bring the yellow down my neck and add orange shading again. More highlight. I use my Lip Sense lip gloss in Blackberry. I've had this one for four years and countless uses, but she's almost empty. I round out my Cupid's bow like I did last time to make my character more cartoon-like. The only downside to this lip sense is that you have to wait for it to dry, so you have to make these very attractive slurpy noises while you wait. <clears throat> I'm using these magnetic lashes that I tried to use once before and failed, so hopefully I'll have better luck. I forgot where I got them. I'm pretty sure it was an Instagram ad. I snipped the lashes to fit on my eyes better, then I place it on. And I did okay, but I was determined to do better. So I tried again and did better the second time. twice on the other eye because you messed up again on the first try. Let's just glue the beads on my face and be done. I use lash glue, which is just liquid latex in a tiny tube, to place them and they took forever to dry. I'm not very patient, so I had a bunch of fun having them fall like 20 times. And it's pal. Looking at both looks side by side, I am happy with the improvement. I also had a lot of fun taking photos with my husband. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and go check out Stutson's studio. Please go check him out and give his channel lots of love from me. I hope you make today a great day. Bye-bye! Yep, yep. <coughs> Enunciate! Emily, <coughs> Are you recording? Adjusting it. Oh, I'm still recording. Oh no.